The Walking Weapon, Josh Alexander, and you're listening to Total Nonstop Impact. Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans featured right here on the Impact Lounge. This is Trent along with my, my seductive co-host, Jabel. <laughs> <laughs> every week a new uncomfortable adjective for you every it's, week it's getting stranger folks it's getting seductive. Oof. i was talking oh. to mrs j bone and she said he's seductive so i said okay this is you know you guys had a good weekend i said okay i'm gonna i'll call it out that he's seductive no, no, I know, now i know you're full of shit but that's all right <laughs> uh guys we are here to break down the august 23rd 2019 episode of impact wrestling cali combat we're gonna get into that in just a second here cali combat we're gonna get into that in just a second here but uh little pleasantries jay how you doing how was the weekend how is uh how's everything going up there in the great state of wisconsin oh wisconsin's been uh weird we've hit another weird part of summer man we've hit like the 70s degrees it's very non- typical summer usually we're still in the 80s and 90s for now way into september and it's it's getting cool out i'm not complaining because yeah I really don't sure like the heat it's a it, it, uh, you know bit of a drought we hit a, a dry patch now we had about 24 hours of drizzling rain the drizzling shits or whatever you want to call it but uh drizzling shits it's uh hey it, it gave me a, a break from uh outdoor work so i'm catching up on some uh you know podcasting stuff some household stuff so uh it's all good it's all great good. yeah your weather's the same as ours i mean i'm i'm an hour south of you so it's pretty much oh the same yeah, thing. yeah. <laughs> but uh it's good man yeah life's good um we got some cool stuff uh going on you know as uh as everybody's seen uh my band hemi is uh doing the bound for glory song so that's been pretty imp- pretty awesome that a uh, little feedback from that last week was real nice kept busy kept our social media nice and busy so that is pretty awesome, cool man. pretty so cool. cool so cool yeah very nice so it's been fun it's been a lot of fun uh to talk about so i'm gonna give the listeners a heads up guys i am going to, in about 10 minutes i have a friend that i it's his birthday uh the the you know we're, we're recording this late we're gonna come into midnight every year for 23 years i have called him He's called me at midnight to wish each other happy birthday. We've missed one, and we didn't let each other forget it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's gonna, in 10 minutes, you're all going to be a part of me calling. It's going to be quick. I'm going to call him live on the air. He's going to be a part of the show. Uh, you know, it'll be his podcast debut. How about that? So 10 minutes. I'm giving everybody a, a heads up now. It'll be real quick, though. We're going to jump. I just, I thing is, I'm a loyal friend. I can't miss it. I got to do it. It's all good, it. man. That's that's what friendships <laughs> about, man. That's what we 23 years and on this guy. So it's uh we got to do it. It's part of part of the system here. But that's um rare. that's pretty awesome though. Very nice. Very nice. So, yeah, life's good, Jay. But let's uh, so we're going to start off and do a couple of comments and you got some news. I'm going to do a few quick comments. Kyle is not here as we know. But several <laughs> of the comments were Kyle related. Scumbag scumbag that scumbag <laughs> look at this mir Neesom, eric dehoff god damn who else uh shit who else i mean everybody was all about you know kyle being back you know it was like eh, oh, bill mack everybody welcome back kyle. james st patrick welcome back kyle. everybody was happy that kyle was back and just like a damn absentee absentee relationship or a, sh- a shitty boyfriend that he probably has been here, he's gone again, Jay. He's gone. He just that's it. One and done. You know? It's just, he, it's just like that fresh Prince of Bel Air episode, that son <laughs> of a bitch. <laughs> Why does he want me, man? <laughs> Why does he want me? That's exactly how we feel, guys. <laughs> Why does he want us? You know? One week, I mean he just comes in here, teases us a little bit, teases you guys a little bit, and he's gone. Give me a break. Give me a break. Ah, oh, very frustrating. Very frustrating. Vince Burr also giving him a shout out. Jesus Christ. Um, all right, we're gonna read just a couple of comments here. The uh, Critical Sting talked about his favorite uh, LAX moments. He said his favorite one was fifty one fifty Street Fight versus the OGs. That was his favorite match. Favorite moment was the return of the OGs. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Now, guys, Hakeem Fortin. Wrote an amazing synopsis 
of the Tessa and Sammy storyline. He pitched a great, uh, great storyline. Go take a look. I don't think it's on last week's day. I think it's in the week before's uh, video. And I talked to him about maybe if he, because he's pretty good about these, about doing a, um, doing if it, if he leaves something like a proposed storyline every week, we read it at the end of the show. So uh, we might start doing that. Just put that out there now, because guys, if you've seen Hakeem's uh, storyline pitches, they're pretty good. They're pretty interesting. They're very detailed. Let's put it that way. Extremely detailed. Oh man, they're a page. <laughs> this one's a page long. That sounds huge. <laughs> uh, but speaking of Hakeem, he says management should have stripped the title off a of cage following his quote unquote match with Elgin on Impact, then brought back the Bound for Glory series where eight wrestlers compete, four make it to the semifinals, and then the final two fight for the vacant title crowning a world champion. It basically writes itself. I'm with that because you could have gotten to Sammy and Tessa very easily with this. Very easily. Because Cage, I think, is is a done deal at this point. I don't even know what to make of the Cage thing. I don't you know, know where and I, I, I feel really bad. It's getting talked about a lot. Yeah. I, see it, I see it all over social media. He even jumped in one conversation uh, somewhere on Twitter. And... Um, he put it real simple. He said, it's hard to argue. So yeah, he, it's... so he even feels it, feels it too. And he, yeah, he knows. And it, it, that's got to crush him too, man. Cause he busted his ass so hard last all year. All he wanted, it's all he wanted was to be that, that get that title, man. But uh, that's a bummer. A side yeah. note that the Hakeem pitch storyline is on last week's video on YouTube. Check it out. Guys, I, the I impact thought it on. was. I yeah, it was. was. Yeah. It's a long one. I got. I'll. I'll be. I'll admit. I didn't read. <clears throat> I read part of it. I didn't read all of it. I will read the whole thing. I promise. Uh, Richard Cartledge says, "Poll for the loungers and the hosts. Should I change my username to help Kyle out because Kyle cannot pronounce cartilage? It's not. <laughs> it's not cartilage. It's cartilage. This is a fine British gentleman <laughs> with a very with a fine British name. It's a very, uh, you know, it's a very classy name." And Kyle can't get it right because Kyle's a scumbag, as we know. Can't get it right. <laughs> now, Jay, five minute warning. We, you know, the news is taking up a little longer, so we're gonna we're gonna let, let's write out the comments here. That's I'll, fine. I'll make my call. And Jay, guys, has a little bit of news. We're gonna do a quick news bit, then we're gonna jump into the review. Okay. So, I got a couple more here. Let's see. Uh, let's see. J- Bill Mack, welcome back, Kyle. The scumbags weren't the same without you leading the way. Wait a minute, Bill. The scumbag is Kyle. We're, we, you know, we're, we're the decent, upstanding human beings here. <laughs> <laughs> in a perfect oh, yeah. world, Cage... Here, 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 Bill pitches something we just talked about here. In a perfect world, Cage would have won the Impact World title, had a great feud with Elgin, defended the title like a fighting champion. However, this isn't a perfect world, and it's sad that the injury stopped, stopped that, and the comeback was cut short by another injury. Now, uh, real quick, have we confirmed it's another injury? Or is it the same one nagging him? That's why I can't... We don't know yet. I'm guessing I, it's the same one. I'm guessing it's his back and yeah. a couple other things because uh, Andre, a buddy of mine, Andre Corbeil, was uh, talking famous, to him. The and, famous Andre Corbeil. Yes, yes, yeah. from Canada. Um, he's, he, uh, I don't, mem- I don't remember specifically what it was, but he played the audio and I listened to it, and it's, uh, it was a few things. And so he's got a he's yeah he's he's uh, pretty dinged up. It's sad. That's rough. That's right. He's a young father also. I mean, who knows, man? I, we don't really have a full diagnosis, but uh, yeah. Bill also says just give Cage a time off. Let it be Sammy or Elgin to get the title, get a run until Cage is able to come back 100. percent Come back, have a good feud with one of the two before challenging again. I'm still waiting on that Sammy Callahan World Title run, even though I know Sammy doesn't need a title to get it over. After all, they don't call him a draw for nothing. I agree, man. I, I'm big on a Sammy Callahan title run. I'd be, it'd be great if he. Uh, you're goddamn right. I should have. Yeah, but th- here he is again, ladies and gentlemen. Sammy Callahan here to tell me <laughs> he wants to be the world champion. Uh, there's nothing else I should be. I should be the world champion. All right, Sammy, I, I gotta do a podcast. Can you get the hell out of here? No, I'm not. Get, just get out of here. This is my house. What are you doing in my house? Jesus. Every time you mention his name, it's like it's like Candyman. You mention it three times, and he she appears. That's, <laughs> it. That's it. <laughs> you, you okay, man? You get some air. <laughs> yeah. He's in my house. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, I'd be big. It's just we wrote our. I think what happened was now. Uh, this is my prediction, Jay. 
I think they assumed Cage would be good after because they brought him back for a little bit. Remember, he came back, and then he had the little match. I think they thought he, he thought he would be okay. And I think it didn't work out. I think he's now – he went to Columbia to do that stem cell thing that all the other guys did, like uh, Johnny and Ryback and gosh, who else is down there? Have you heard about this? These guys doing the stem cell research or stem cell therapy in Columbia? Yes. Yeah. I'm seeing it pop up all over the place. Ryback did it. He said he's back to 100% now. Johnny says he is too. Johnny so I, just got me. back. He did a what, – what did he do? A, a, a bar wrestling date? He did something. He's back. Uh, Kevin Nash went down there. And uh, for a guy that's had a billion surgeries, for a guy like him to go down there and say, this stuff works, you know it's got to be good. Yeah. I mean, it, something is up. This is obviously experimental surgery. But um, can is it safe to say that there's there's an option here? Apparently, you know, it can't... beats everything that they're comparing it to in the States. It's something. I mean, who knows? Cage is down there now, so we'll see. We'll see. Um, Colby Cooper is saying that Sue Young was speaking Laos. Okay, that was Korean. I thought I think she's Korean, but maybe it's Laos. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I'm sticking to mine. Dude. I think right. I think I'm right. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. We got one minute. Till I got to make this call, Jay. But I'm gonna say uh, James St. Patrick here. What a great signing by Impact of bringing the hottest. Live podcaster of the business today, not Ethan Page, but I'm talking about Professor J Bone smashing topics and bringing his knowledge to the lounge. Last but not least, TMZ Trent Moneymaker Zuberry, congrats getting two songs not picked up by Impact. Last thing, TMZ, you make too much money to be drinking cheap mud water. You're a superstar, bro. <laughs> Here's some free advice get about some great coffee. Buy some Keurig Starbucks Plus coffee cups that is labeled 2X Coffee Dark Roast. I promise it's the best coffee, and it will give you a nice amount of energy. No jackhammer needed. A little moose tie-in right there. All right, James? Who is that? You got it. James St. Patrick. He oh, loves yeah. us. Oh, he, yeah. He, he pops in on my uh, on my he, show, too. Yeah, great loves, guy. All right. I'm going to make this call, Jay. Go make this call. It. All right, guys. We're calling my buddy. His name is Dave. We call him Mr. Mad. I'll, I'll mute. All right, here we go. Come on. See if he picks up. Guys, yeah, you're all part of this here. Yeah, come on. He just had he had some kind of surgery today too, a minor surgery. You not gonna pick up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're gonna leave him a message if he doesn't pick up. Oh jeez. Leave him a message. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna leave a message. We're gonna leave a message for him. All right. Here we go. We're all gonna leave him a message. Hey, you son of a bitch. Happy birthday. It's midnight, just like clockwork every year. I'm doing my podcast right now live. All my listeners are listening to me wish you a happy birthday right now. Guys, this is Mr. Mad. You know, Mad, the, the, Mr. May is a rapper, too. He was in the band. He was in Hemi for a little bit as well. So, uh, you know, if you guys look at some old Hemi videos and stuff, he was on there. But, yeah, happy birthday, you bastard. I love you. Have a great day today. If you get this, call me back. You can get on the podcast. All right, later. There you go, guys. See, I'm a good friend. See, if it's your birthday, I'll wish you happy birthday, too. Just don't call me at midnight. I'll be in bed. No, yeah, you'll be, actually, no, you won't be. You're up. You're doing a podcast with me. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, let's, let's wrap it up on the uh, on the comments there. So that was it, guys. Thanks for indulging me on that phone call, guys. We appreciate that. So, all right. Jay's, Jay's got a little bit of news. Jay got a little bit of news. We're going to hit some news here. All before right. We jump in. What do you yeah. got? Um, saw something today. Uh, really kind of surprised me. Um, was watching, you know, cause it's, uh, it's Monday and, Monday. uh, now I know I, what I, my first, when I first say what this is, you guys go, well, that's not impact wrestling. What the hell? Okay. Just bear with me. All right? <laughs> okay. I was watching being the elite. Okay. That's the young bucks thing. You know, right. it's, you know, all elite wrestling. Okay. Yep. Well, a certain former Impact Wrestling champion and current Impact Wrestling Knockouts champion was on there today. Are you serious? Whoa, whoa, really? Johnny Impact, Johnny Mundo, John Morrison, whatever you want to call him, and uh, his wife. Really? Hi! We're on 
being the elite. Hmm. Okay. The uh, the uh, the 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 ske- the, uh, the little thing they did, the the you know sketch comedy, whatever, um, was hilarious. I I not everybody likes their brand of comedy. What they throw on being the elite, I like it. I I like the stuff. You know, whether it's part of all elite wrestling or not, it's you know they throw some goofy stuff in there. Sure. So apparently Luchasaurus and um oh what the hell oh Jungle Boy they were walking Taya and Johnny's dog and oh. Johnny and Taya were walking Marco Stunt what <laughs> it was you, you got to watch it it's hilarious so uh, chaos ensues. They all start doing some goofy parkour shit. Then it goes on to the next skit. Okay. Okay. So let's. I don't want to overthink this. Okay. Mm-hmm. A lot of these guys work together on the indies out in California. They hang out, whatever. They know each other. They all it's live fun. out there. Yeah. I mean, right. the a business. lot of them do out in California. Uh, Luchasaurus and Johnny are very close. Okay. Mm-hmm. Johnny helped. Uh, Luchasaurus become a much better wrestler, believe it or not. Parkour, everything. Um, <clears throat> there's been a lot of mystery as to where Johnny's going to end up. Mm-hmm. I think we might have our answer. But seeing Taya also in the skit was interesting. Um, I think I heard that her contract is up somewhere towards the end of the year. Okay. Fall time, towards the end of the year, something. And that bears the question now. Do you think when her contract is up, or somewhere between now and then, you know, they're going to keep track of this. Do you think she's going to go with her husband off to wherever he ends up, possibly All Elite Wrestling? I wouldn't be surprised. Or... Do you think she will stay with Impact Wrestling? You know, it's... Do they want to... Like, okay, nice to work together. They're very close. They're very much in love. But does it? do they want to keep relying on being that couple that's always together, building off each other everywhere they go? I mean, she's yeah. got... I like that she's independently the star now. She's not Johnny's wife. She's tied of Valkyrie in Impact. She's the yeah. champ. And I think that's kind of cool. That's that's good for her to have that. You know, I think that that says a lot for her to build off of. It is. Is it a layup to go? Sure. I mean, if they want to throw enough money. I mean, money talks, I'm sure. But it's also an opportunity aspect, too. Does she want to be known as just a woman who follows her husband anywhere? And Or is it like, hey, do you want to carve your own path and do your own thing? That that that's an option too. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Again, I like it, and people tend to panic, but I like that. You know, did you notice now when LAX left, there was some sadness for sure. Oh, but absolutely. There, but there wasn't the gloom and doom as there normally is. You know, what I mean, when somebody leaves, people are really, really down, and oh my god, it's going to devastate the company. People, I think Impact is writing so nicely at this point that. They are getting everything out of these guys. What else was left for LAX other than to go solo? And nobody wants to see him solo, you know? So it's like, yeah. so it's like, you know, hey, they, we got, we got the run. The run was good. It's like, we got enough out of LAX. Let them go. We'll get somebody else now. Like, I think with Taya, by the end of the year, she's going to have taken the knockouts title to Madison Square Garden. She's about to take it there with that. Um, now, when is that show? I don't even know when that show is. That um, Triple A show. It's a month from now. It's sometime in September, I believe. So think about that. The Impact title is going to be an MSG. You know what I'm saying? Two Impact talents are going one on one in Madison Square Garden. It's supposed That's, to be Tessa versus Taya. Yeah. Right. Titles on the line. I, I, I don't know if they're going to put the other title on the line, but the Impact one. But pretty cool. You know what I mean? Like that she did without being Johnny's wife. That's. Tessa, that's Tess, um, Taya Valkyrie doing that. You know, that's that's her. That's her thing. Yeah. I think that's neat. So uh, let's see what happens. I, I think, honestly, dude, 
they're not on TV yet. They all live in Cali. They're all friends. It's like it got everybody talking, right? It got us talking. Why not? I I have not seen that. That's why I wanted to throw it out there. I have not seen anybody bring it up. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because I well, I did an AEW update thing on my own channel, Smash This Podcast, cheap plug. Um, That's you know, an expensive plug. That's not it's, cheap. Plug. It's it, expensive yeah, plug. I'll, I'll pay you later. I'll pay you later. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, like you know, match updates for because up this this weekend is all out. You know, this their last big pay per view before TV starts. So, you know, there's a lot of rumors floating around, match setups, all this kind of stuff, who's joining, who's not. Right. Um, so I talked about that, and I was going to talk about Taya, and I was like, oh, you know what, I'll save it for another thing. And I was like, ooh, I'll bring it up tonight. There you go. So there you go. There you go. Cool. All right, so late. listen, hey, who knows? Let the speculation begin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. and I don't want to piss off fans by – bringing that up later well no she can't go you know it's just it, it, that that was not my purpose you know? i'll tell i'll tell the folks this talents are special to promotions no question about it yeah but uh, working in the business i see like i work for an indie i work for aaw independent in chicago one of the bigger independents half the people on tv came through aaw now it Imagine how devastating it is for an independent company to lose stars two, three at a time. We lost Trevor Lee and ACH in one night. You know what I mean? That and that. I mean, but here's yeah. the cycle. The cycle continues. The wheel keeps turning. That's wrestling. There's so many talents coming out that there's always going to be somebody coming up next. And that's what I've come to learn is that there's somebody waiting in the wings for their shot. You know, Taya was once the young, the young girl. If she leaves, it's somebody, you know, it's somebody else's turn now. It's maybe, hey, maybe it's Kira's turn. You know, maybe it's Jordan. Jordan's 23 years old. Maybe it's her turn. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the cycle continues, man. And you got, you got to keep the ball moving for progression. They yeah. move on to other things. More people come up. That's just how it is. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. Bridge. All right. Guys, all right. Let's jump in here, Jay. Let's jump. I, actually, I'm going to do one more. I got one more piece. I got a piece of news. But I'm not going to tell everybody yet, Jay. Oh. I told I told you. I told you. But guys, Ooh. teasing you. I'm going to reveal a big, big piece of news next week. Next week, I got a, I got some big news that I'm going to reveal right here on the podcast. So tune in next week. I got some. I got something really cool. Now, some of you might already might find this out beforehand, but I'm going to reveal it next week on next week's show. So just putting that awesome. out. All right, Jay, let's jump into a Cali combat from – it wasn't from Los Angeles. It was from um, – God, they, they, this town they were saying. It was weird. I can't remember the name of the town. But uh, this was from Championship Wrestling from Hollywood Studio, from what I understand. Am I, am I wrong there? That's what, that's what I'm told. It was. Yeah. It, yeah. It, they, they, uh, they actually made it look a little bigger with the lighting and how they set up uh, the stage and stuff. Because I love it. I yeah. love the lighting and the screens and the look. I absolutely loved it. I think yeah, it looked I, cool. I think they wanted to like kind of hide how small the joint was because it's I, I like some of the content that we get from Holly uh from the Championship Wrestling in Hollywood, but mm -hmm. the, the place, it's like, oh my god, it, sometimes it looks like they have like ten people in a crowd. It kills me. But, but th you know, this one had a good crowd, though. This one had a good crowd. Well, it was this. a nice, loud crowd. That helped. It wasn't like two people clapping. It was right. loud throughout it. That was great. Port Humane, Humane, California is where that was. Port Humane. Yeah. So I don't know where that is in relation to Los Angeles. I mean, I'll, uh, I can Google it while we're talking here. But, uh, but yeah, I like the lighting. It looked real it looked see it was a studio it's studio wrestling it is but it didn't look like the impact zone it looked like a cool arena that's what i liked about it to me yeah. i think it looked badass i was i was i was all in on that to me that i was like this looks cool and if i want and the rumor was jay that they're they're using this to pitch a a second show i don't know if you heard that rumor that was going around that they, i heard about it but yeah. i didn't understand what exactly what they were yeah i don't know what that means though like you're yeah, using, I didn't, what does that yeah. mean you're pitching a second show what is that 
what does that actually mean? So this is this is uh, an area it's around the beach. It's right next to Oxnard or Ventura, California. So not near LA. It's uh, a little ways from Los Angeles. Because it kind of made it sound like it was like really like really not, close. Not far. I mean, it's 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 right by the state park and Topanga State Park. It's not terribly far. It's basically the coast, you know, off of. Uh, if you go a little north of Santa Monica and Malibu and all that stuff, it's right there. So it's not terribly far from Los Angeles. Oh, okay. So yeah, so just give you give you guys some context of what we're looking at here. But yeah, it's you know hey, it's they're talking about another show. I don't know what that's for, but hey, listen, do it. Whatever, more content the better. Do your thing. It's about yeah. an hour from LA. I just like Google that. So it's now nah, it's like a suburb almost. But yeah. But that means it's a ten-hour drive. Exactly. Yeah. So Los Angeles <laughs> crap, as we know. God damn. But uh, I liked it. I think it looked cool. I love all the screens or the logo flashing around. I think that looked really cool. And the blue lights was was a great touch. But we kicked it off, Jay Elgin and Rhino. Hot match. Hot crowd with this one, man. Crowd was super into this match. Oh uh, yeah, they loved Rhino. Oh, Huge. my goodness. When did he get so over in California? This is a Midwestern boy, man. I was like, Rhino was like killer over in California. The Huge. EC dub chance? Oh, Unreal. my goodness. Ridiculous. So Ridiculous. good to hear. Huge. Um, ended with a, D, a double count out, you know, which I figured was going to happen. They, they couldn't really... They couldn't really do get either one of these guys down uh, at this time. They got to keep them both strong, but man... I hate that finish, but yeah, I get yeah, it. I do too. It's a they, cop they, out. They want to keep it going. They want to, you know, they want to project it to something big in the future. I, my guess is Victory Road. I could be wrong. Could be, could be. I listen, I think that there's money in this feud because these guys have been really good so far together. Chemistry is good. I'm yeah. digging the chemistry on this one. Yeah, they're yeah, they are good together. I like it. The back between yeah. the backstage segments. And how they're, you know, in, in interjecting whoever to break him up. Scott the Moore looks like he's gonna have a stroke in the ring. I yeah, it's I like that. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's um it's gonna be good. I, I I'll build this. I'm I, I wouldn't mind building this to take this to slam uh, to um Bound for Glory. Take it over to Bound for Glory. You think that, so? Yeah, why not? You know, you got it's already look, we're in September now. Right? We figure we're in September. You uh, got you could stretch it. If you do it right, you could stretch it. You know, they stretch. They, Impact's good at building feuds. These guys, they've gotten to touch, but they haven't gotten a win, decisive win. So stretch it out. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Do you think like a cage match? That way uh, they got to stay in the ring? That's a good idea. You need something because these, these two are so rowdy. You need some stipulation on these guys. Otherwise, wow. they'll, they'll get counted out again or whatever, you know? Right. So, Rhino reintroduces a monster's ball, something. Could be. Something. He had a good one in 05 when he, uh, the night he won the world title. I think he had a monster's ball earlier that night, I believe. I'm trying to remember what that what that was. I bound for glory 05. I believe that was Rhino. Uh, Rhino was in a, a great match in bound for glory 05. Um, well, yeah, I'll look it up while we're talking here, but yeah. we'll see where they go with that. We'll see where they uh, where they take it. But um, we go from that, Jay. Uh, so, yeah, we got the uh, security you mentioned. We got a tag team match. Ethan Page and Josh Alexander to the north taking on Reno Scum, West Coast guys who were very loved by their home crowd, hometown, home coast, I should say. Oh, yeah. Well, the West Coast loves Reno Scum. A lot here's of my, love. Here's the problem. I don't – outside of the West the West Coast, like Vegas and L.A., these guys have failed to, to connect with the audience. I think – I'm part of me thinking it's because their name is regionalized. They're Reno scum. They're known as a West Coast team. So I think when they were in the impact zone, people weren't taken to them because of that reason. Yeah, you know, and it was it was there was a string of bad luck. And yeah, and injuries, injuries, and Don Callis said something kind of interesting while they were wrestling. Uh, made it kind of sound like the relationship wasn't that great with this tag team really i didn't catch that what did he say he, he said something like i uh, had a couple strikes with the company and this was strike three. Oh, really yeah like it wasn't uh wasn't what it wasn't in-ring stuff it was uh backstage something maybe attitude something 
Interesting. I did not hear any of that. Yeah, go, go back and go back and listen to the commentary. They said that like towards the start of the match when they started, it was kind of interesting. It was like, hmm, because I see a lot of people online. It's like, man, okay, you know, we got we got some holes to fill now. Let's Ooh. let's get some new tag teams in there. Maybe Reno Reno Scum ain't it? Because I was, I I felt like this is out of this third run out of the last two years where they've come in occasionally. Yeah. Um, I felt like they were firing on all cylinders in this one, you know. And this match, I loved this match against the North. I mean, they, you know, they came up short, but I felt like, you know, they really, can, they really connected on this one. Like, yeah. I really paid attention to them this time. I was like, oh man, everyone's healthy. They look great in the ring. They look like their chemistry has even improved. It's. I was like, hey, it's, yeah. it's their time, man. They're Maybe healthy. Not. They're healthy, man, for sure. Uh, side, yes, yeah, so I was right. The first ever Bomb for Glory, 2005, Rhino won the world title. He beat Jeff Jarrett. And he had a, he had a he had, I think it was a Monsters Ball. He had a, no, it wasn't a Monsters Ball, but it was like a 10-man gauntlet. Okay. But then he also had a match against Abyss. Well, he did have a Monster. Rhino wrestled three times that night. He, had, he beat Abyss. Jeff Hardy and Sabu in a Monsters Ball. Then he then he replaced Kevin Nash in a gauntlet, a ten man gauntlet, and then he won the world title. Yeah, Rhino's a star. In 05. And that's 05. The guy's still at high caliber performance now too. Unbelievable. Awesome. Unbelievable. awesome. Good for him. Good for him. He looks great. Uh, so yeah, the North, on this one, North obviously yeah, the North uh, retains the tag belts. So they're they're on a, too much of a roll right now. They're, this is one of the best tag teams in the world today. Yeah. Uh, these guys are unstoppable. They're huge guys. They're big dudes, man. Uh, these are big, scary dudes. I mean, Ethan Page is a little goofy, but he's he's a big guy. Uh, they look like champions. They look good. So yeah, I mean, they're they're no complaints, man. I'm I'm really becoming a fan of this this tag team, um, and that's what this show needs: is strong tag teams, and they are they are knocking it out of the park. Big time, big time. These guys are great. Uh, it's, I see a long title reign, man. I don't see who can who can take these two out. At least not yet. Yeah. Uh, kick it over to that. The Ace Austin Eddie Edwards Alicia Edwards saga continues. He's in the back <laughs> and he's faking an injury. And I uh, he said Eddie did it. You know, he gets Alicia, Alicia to believe it. She help has her help her take off her his shirt. You know, he's her shirtless. She gets a little sympathy. She's got to go. I mean, he's laying the seeds, man. This is a classic home record, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> what a scumbag. What a scumbag. This is this is some Kyle shit right here. You know what I mean? This is a scumbag move. He's wrecking this house. He's wrecking the Edwards home. What a, what a terrible. Uh, Madison Drain is warning Jordan Grace about getting involved with Rosemary. She's talking from experience on that one. Jordan says, I don't need you or Rosemary. I don't, I don't need anybody. She's a tough chick, so... We go to Havoc versus Alicia. Uh, this is, looks like a domination. Havoc obviously beats her. Tombstone Pile Driver for the win. Quick match, Jay. Rough. Al- Alicia is basically she's kind of the the one they feed to everybody in the knockouts division, but she sells well enough. I think that's that works out. Well, there, there was a thing a couple months ago. It looked like she was possibly going to be stepping away, but they they never got. So that announcement, uh, I don't know what that was. Yeah, I guess not. Yeah. I guess it never happened, so. Yeah. Who knows, man? Who knows? <sighs> Poor Alicia. Poor Alicia. But hey, listen, she's there. She, you know, she's, she's getting the back. Her acting is not the greatest. That's my, some beef. Like, you know, when she's reciting lines, it's like, oh, you're really trying to remember the lines that were written out for you. You are trying to remember lines here or come up with improv lines. I just want Alicia, like. Eddie wasn't that great either before they started giving him all that character work. Eddie got a lot better. I just want Alicia to relax a little bit, deliver the lines a lot more naturally. I think she's got it. She's got to just keep practicing. That's all. It, it just, just keep it simple. You know, keep it you, simple. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to have her go out there and cut a 19 minute promo. Right now. Absolutely not. No, Please. No. no, not right no. now. <laughs> no, just, you know, little scenes here and there. Keep it simple. You know, I think she's doing all right. I mean, I like her in the storyline. The storyline, because say, yeah. because I think she's, I I think I think it's uh you know what what she's what she's doing with Ace and Eddie 
the going back and forth thing, I think it's, I think, I, I'm, you know, I think it's viable, you know? Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I mean, she, she's kind of just playing, playing dumb the whole thing. Like, I don't know. I'm not thinking anything of it. Yeah. So after the match, Ace Austin comes down to check on Alicia, his, his crush. Eddie Edwards comes out, chases him around the ring and walks right into a choke slam from Havoc. That, I thought that was kind of weird. Uh, that Havoc took out Eddie, but, um, wrong place, Ace, wrong time. Yeah, basically. Uh, but Eddie or Ace leaves with Alicia. So here we go. Uh, we get another, as soon as, soon as that ends, we get another Sue Young cryptic message, which I love him. It's so freaking creepy. So creepy. I love it. Yeah. This one even like it was, it was short, but sweet. And it was like, uh, whatever she was saying, it was all like dubbed backwards. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, so it, that made it a little more creepy. I got one line I picked up from the whole segment when uh, Ace came out to check on yeah. Alicia Edwards. Don's first line, as soon as he comes out, why doesn't he have a shirt on? <laughs> 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 just, Don is just, phenomenal. It, Don it is. just struck me as <laughs> somebody put a shirt on that guy. <laughs> Don and Josh together have been the best team. I like Hope, too, but I think Josh and Don have a great chemistry. I have come to, and I've talked about this, too, because, you know, back when it was uh, Borash and Josh, I I, I stopped watching. Really? Because, well, their their feud made it unwatchable for me. Because it it, it wasn't like they just nitpicked a little bit here and there. Like, you know, like kept the, like the one thing during the show, it lasted the whole freaking show. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. They're not calling any of the matches. All they're doing is arguing. I'm trying to watch this shit and I'm listening to, you know, my, my, you know, there's my ADD kicking in where you're trying to focus on one thing and you're hearing something else. It's like, ugh. so yeah, I took a couple months off. I'm like, this is ridiculous. When this is over, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it in again. And I did. When, yeah, when they were when they were done, and it was right after that that uh, I think Borash left. Actually, it's true he did. He was gone, and and I don't know what the hell they have him doing over there. I have no idea. I <laughs> I don't know what Borash does because he he's, sure is he's, he's getting coffee for Vince. I don't know. Who knows, man? <laughs> what a weird move. I was fine with him. I you know just a quick sidebar. You know, people were were freaking out a lot of the mass exodus going on at that t- during that time. But I'm like, you guys do realize they needed to shed anything that was TNA. They needed to shed it. You know, like that includes Borash, who identifies with that. That includes Abyss. You know, they had to let these guys go. They they're too related to the old company. So, just well, a quick sidebar. That and there was it was also at the same time was the whole awkward um, global force wrestling thing. Yeah, for all sure. of the, all those guys that were brought in over the course of a year or whatever it was from Jeff Jarrett's company now gone. Um, yeah, they're all gone too. You know, uh, I think the strongest one that came out of that was. Eli Drake. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, I think you're right. And he's in the end with the NWA now. He Which... is. He is. And they start tapings in the, somewhere in a couple months, end of September, early October. They just nope. revealed that today. Did they so, really? Oh wow, good for them. Okay. Yeah. And they're and they're doing studio. They're they revealed the studio that they're doing it right in the middle of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. So it's gonna have a similar feel to what this episode of Impact Wrestling was. It's very interesting. Was it? Um, was it? Uh, is it doing it at Center Stage? Is Center Stage still up? Is that the whole thing? Oh, I don't know. They 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 said it's it's GBC Studios or something. It's okay. Uh, it's somewhere. I don't, know. Else. I don't know if the old Center Stage was still a standing building. I don't know offhand. But uh, cool. Good for them, man. Very nice. Yeah. Hey, uh, you- a lot of stuff happening in wrestling. Q4 is a busy, busy quarter of wrestling. I mean, AEW, potential impact, new TV deal, NWA taping. Uh, God, I mean, who knows what else is going to be going on. So busy times coming up, guys, uh, for wrestling. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, all right, so that said, all right, we go from that. OVE Cam, Sammy Callahan blaming Dave Chris for losing their match. 
last week against Tessa and Tommy. Dave's not having it. I like that Dave spits it back. Yeah, I like that the whole V guy, they spit it back at him, though. They kind of give him a hard, they give Sammy a hard time, which is funny. Oh, yeah, was, they, they go enjoying. back and forth, yeah. Moose addresses the social media conflict between him and Ken Shamrock after. Because everybody's seen Moose and Ken Shamrock have been feuding on, on Twitter. Bad. I'm talking like no holds barred, bad. And like, this should have got intense, Jay. Did you see any of this? I was like a day late to it, and then I and then I saw it, and then like the next day they announced that Ken Shamrock was coming to Vegas, and then I like rewound everything, and I was like, "Whoa, wait a minute! What the hell did I miss? This is crazy!" Oh yeah, Some of the yeah. Tweets were it's <laughs> I, I looked up a couple news bits that had the conversations going down the page, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Oh. <laughs> Ken Shamrock, dude, there's still he's still a freaking beast. I like that it's Moose because I think the only guy who could handle it would be Moose. He is the guy who can who can work this with Ken. I think that'd be cool. It's gonna be exciting to see, man. Really exciting. Yeah, right. I am very curious to see what's gonna happen in Vegas. That's Next what, week. And, and that's also um it's also tied in with I think it's I think it's twofold. I think it's I think it's nice to bring back a, a veteran, but he also has his own uh, promotion to uh, do cheap plugs for in Vegas. Okay. Yeah, he's That's starting cool. his own. Is it, it's bare? It's something MMA related. It's bare knuckle something. Gotcha. Yeah, I, mean, I listen, forgot what the yeah I forgot I got to look at the name. Well, we'll talk more about it next time. Next when, week. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Former world champion, first one under the T- the TNA banner, you know, which became yes. Impact. So he was the first one. He was the original guy in 2002. You know, that was the one who did it. So that, I, I, I'm looking forward to the videos and the clips and all that stuff. So in Vegas next week, guys. All right. X Division champion Jake Crist versus Rich Swan, title on the line. Rematch because uh, Jake beat Swan for that title. Yes. Uh, but we. I mean, it's it's a fun match. These two, a little slower than they're normal. I got to say, a little slower. The ring was smaller. A big complaint I heard on everybody was the ring was about two, three feet smaller. I don't know if you saw that, Jay. That the, that was like the only complaint of the show that I was hearing. It, it looked a little sm- It looked like, uh, you know. I didn't I mean, mind it. Yeah. No, I never mind that. I think it has. I, I think it has to do with the surroundings. Like, uh, for example, when they go to uh, New York. The ballroom in New York that they always do it from, you know, like a, a every like once a quarter or, or a couple yeah. times a year, whatever it is, that's a smaller one, and and it's because the whole thing is set up smaller, you know. I, it it happens. It, it depends on the surroundings. If you're in a bigger arena like Sam's Town, you're going to use a bigger ring. If you're in Mexico, bigger arena, you're going to use a bigger ring or six sides or whatever, you know. It's a yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't really notice it because I mean I recognized the studio right away. I was like, oh, that looks familiar, and then I saw the the crowd, and I was on the stage, and the, the on the other side, and there's nobody over there. Okay, yeah, they're in the championship from Hollywood studio. Now, but uh, I I did not even pay attention to that ring until somebody people were pointing it out. I was like, oh, okay, I guess like that stuff doesn't bother me. Like I don't care about that stuff. It kind of uh, depends on how the angle of the camera is too i think that has to do you know dimension wise it's just, yeah yeah that's how you should but who knows maybe this match i've seen a little bit slower to me maybe it was because of that match you know out of the ring who knows but um uh rich went for a handspring cutter jake uses the referee as a shield and then jake rolled up rich with a handful of tights so cheap uh cheap loss for rich you know coming up short on the on the uh, x division title uh rematch yeah. so yeah, all right, so we go from that. We get a little promo, Jay. To Neil Dashwood coming soon. Dude, I, I, I'm, I'm excited for this, man. And she's going straight for the champ, which also makes me, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this a little bit ago, about the future of Taya. Um, that, that makes me wonder, it's like, ooh, we got a significant name coming in here going after the champ right away. Kinda, in Vegas. Kind of similar how... Um, uh, I was gonna say Elgin went after Cage right away. Yes, you know, yeah. um, similar. But we'll see what happens. 
I don't All know. All right, cool. Cool, man. Um, so we go from that, Jay, we go from that to the Daisy Hit Squad arriving on the farm. Overall, <laughs> <of the cat. laughs> I, can't, I can't do the squeal, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, Cody Diener. But they were, they showed us walking onto the farm. So hilarity to ensue in the next couple of weeks. Oh, I can't wait. From the work. But, um, Man, R- <laughs> Ruhit's gonna end up getting like thrown in something. From, oh yeah, uh, from he's not Gamma. gonna take. It. He's definitely <laughs> not take the crap. <laughs> Taya addresses the state of the knockouts division to a little press conference. Next week, she said she's gonna break the record as the longest reigning knockouts champion of all time, which surprised me, Jay. I thought I didn't think it'd be Taya. I I, I thought it'd be hard to beat Gail. I thought Gail um, held it really long, but yeah, maybe that that's it's uh. Taya's turn, man. That that could be it. And then she says she'll put the title on the line in Mexico City. So we got a knockout title match coming up next week. No, I stay away from spoilers. Um, I have not heard who uh, she's facing. Um, I my, my guess is to, uh, one of the hot up and comers, maybe from AAA, or maybe a legend like Fabi Apache. I don't know. Could be anybody. Could be, and, and I don't read spoilers either. I hate spoilers. I think it's the stupidest thing. Yeah. Uh, spoilers. So, all right, man. So we go from that. Willie Mag versus Trey. Kind of a match with no background, but a nice little showcase. Uh, Willie hit Trey with a mid-air stunner to get the win on this one. Uh, both heavy talents for the company. Both stay strong, I think, in this match. Kind of nothing to it. There wasn't much to uh, going forward afterwards. No, it was I- just a cool match. Yeah, I don't know who they're building off of that. Are they building? Is it Willie right now who they're looking to get some more out of? You know, or is it Trey that we had for a bit and um, continue to have? So well, I'm Willie's, guessing Willie's a West Coast guy, so you know he's going to get a good pop out of West Coast. So true. You know, they, I think that could be part of it. Okay, that's true. All right, cool. We go from that. Tommy Dreamer tells Melissa Santos that he's going to enjoy beating up Sammy Callahan. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, <laughs> that that brings us to the to the uh, to the main event: Sammy Callahan versus Tommy Dreamer in a no DQ match. It it's pretty intense. Tommy went right for Callahan's crotch, which that had to hurt. Crotch claw. <laughs> yeah. Um. But dude, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's this was this was a great, this was your total Sammy match. You know, he was just reckless, he's wild. He brought the best out in in, in Tommy, which I think yeah, I like that. Sammy yeah. brings the best out in people. He brought the best out in Tommy, which was great. A uh, lot of back and forth, tons of back and forth. Um, the finish came when Callahan kind of dodged a top rope elbow drop from Dreamer, and he which caused him to go through the. Uh, into the steel ladder. Callahan then hit him with the pile driver, got the win. So Sammy wins. Big match for Sammy. After the match, he called to continue to tag Tommy Dreamer, but Tessa shows up to uh, defend him off, and then Jake attacks her, and then Ca- and then Callahan he gives her a pile driver as they go off the air. He pile drives Tessa. Yeah, brutal pile drivers for everyone. One yeah, for Tommy, at- one for Tessa. It was ugly. Oh my god. Oh my god! But yeah, man, that was uh, that was it. So you know, Sammy beats him. Sammy beats Tommy Dreamer on that one. So it's a big win for Sammy. Progresses the feud. You know, Tessa made the uh, the appearance. I gotta so. say, I think it's interesting how uh, Jake keeps coming to the rescue of not not necessarily the rescue, but keeps because uh, you know, because they said before the match. They're like, hey, you're gonna you're gonna do this one on on your own, or what, what did they say? Oh, they said that the Jake, they said that the Jake. So it, it's funny that they didn't help Jake, but they keep helping Sammy, and it's always Jake that runs in there. Ooh. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it funny? That is funny. Wonder why. I know I think, Dave. I think Dave. something's. I think something's going on here, and I got a feeling. Uh, something's gonna happen. I, I I can I can I can smell how this is gonna turn out. I don't know if I should say it. No, say should it. I, should I say it? What the hell? Say it. 
I, I, I smell something. Something's going to happen between Tessa and Jake. She's going to get sick of his shit. And we're going to have an X division match between Tessa and Jake. And I'm not going to assume how that's going to turn out yet. But I can, I can, I can, I can smell that because then, I mean, if, and if Tessa did take that, then she could cash that in Mm. and all for glory. Oh boy. All right. This is, this is good. All right, Jay, this is good. This is good. Let's see where they fall, man. That makes it exciting. I, I, and I, I'm okay with that because you know, this is a different kind of feud that Impact Wrestling has done before. They've never put this much attention with no. a, a knockout into the main title picture. I mean, I don't think they have, have they? I don't know. I, I, no, they haven't. I don't think they no. have. No. But you know what, man? I, I just, you know, and I keep going back to this. When they did it, the set, now I realize that she's not the most popular because of controversy over the years. I get that. That aside, when they did that, the sexy star in Lucha Underground, man, I thought it was so freaking cool. And how they booked that whole storyline. And they made, now it didn't last long. Johnny took it from her like, what, a week or two later or whatever it was. Uh-huh. But man, that was amazing. So I'm like, shit. If they can pull it off and tell a good story, anybody can do it. Guess what? What? Impact's doing it. Real, yeah. There you go. There you go, man. That's cool, huh? Oh, Super yeah. cool. Very cool, dude. Um, well, listen. I think Impact's Impact's got balls, dude. They take chances. That's what I like. They go different. They try new things. Oh, you see other companies doing, oh, yeah, women's evolution. Oh, that's yeah. lovely. You know, yeah. Why are you giving them one to two minute matches? Exactly. Not, you're not having much of an evolution, are you? No. Are you willing to put them on top of the company? Consistently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Akeem, Akeem Fullerton's storyline, I believe, was very similar to what we were just talking about, too. Kind of had some of those elements in there, too. So, uh, just a side note, yeah, if you, if you guys check out his uh his lengthy pitch that you'll see that in there. Just want to give him a shout out though. Uh, I will but, definitely have to read that. I was not yeah. trying to copy you, Aki. No, no, yeah, I'm sure you were. <laughs> uh, but no, ch- take a listen. Not totally, not, not totally exactly. Yeah, take a listen. But um, that was it, man. So big, big win for Sam. It just progresses the few. We were continuing on with you know uh, with with Sammy and Tessa right yeah. now. They we're continuing forward. Yeah, that's they, where we're at. That's the thing. If, if there's no champ around, they got to keep these strong action wise. And the to. matches are great. The st- I like the storylines. You know, you it's not to. that you want to forget about the champ, but you got to. It's a distraction yes. in, a, in a positive way, I guess. It's like it's like playing a little bit of defense at the same time, you know? Yeah. No question, man. No question about it. So well, that was it, guys. That's the tw- the Oct- oh, October, August twenty third, twenty nineteen <laughs> episode of Impact Wrestling Cali Combat. Jay and Trent just broke it down for you guys. Give us your thoughts, man. Give us your feedback. What do you think of the, the show? Did you like it? Did you like the episode? All feedback. Start hitting it. Go. The show's over. So start hitting it. Give me. Let's give that feedback. So, Jay, I liked it overall. I, it could have been a little faster paced. That's my only gripe with it. Yeah. But uh, but it the aesthetic was. Uh, was good. The um, yeah, I mean everything to me. Everything else, match quality was good. Just a little, little speed. That's about it. But otherwise, I'm good, man. I liked it. I uh, we talked about something uh, before we started recording. Uh, you were uh, you were talking uh, podcast numbers and and stuff. I wanted yes. to touch base on that before we get out of here. Yeah, absolutely. So let's put that out there, guys. We were looking at our stats, you know, we were looking at our, our numbers, where people are listening to us, where people are checking out the show. I mean, we were seeing stuff, guys, from, I mean, we're talking Sierra Leone, Vietnam, Cambodia, France, UK, Canada. I mean, gosh, Russia, Jay, we were looking at the Middle East, Qatar. Uh, my God, it just didn't end. So we are... Uh, 
you know, I and, and Jay, I'll let you give your own thanks, but God damn, I am super grateful to these listeners, man. Yeah. Yeah, when you men- when you mentioned that, it just it just blows my mind. And I told you, I said, yeah, I mean, we you know over over in, in my neck of the woods and smash this podcast. You never know who you're gonna hit between yeah. between the music videos that I've done, the wrestling stuff, and I, mm. you know, I I talked to I talked to people in Australia. There's a, a a kid in uh, Hawaii who hits me up once in a while. I mean, it's you, you never know who your your voice or what you're watching is gonna touch on the other side of the world. And yeah. man, we just want to say thank you because it's what keeps us going. Yeah, we're we're super grateful for that. I mean, that's humbling, man. Guys, if you're from some of these other countries that we haven't really talk to many listeners to you know in france and cambodia and sierra leone qatar uh drop a comment either at the youtube channel or on we talk impact on twitter and instagram you know i just at we talk impact anywhere yeah uh, anywhere absolutely. you know let us know i'm i'm i you know tell us how you found us what you think how do we do for you, you know things like that just give us uh give us a feeling of uh what you like from us so we're, we're super grateful man super super grateful very again, yeah. Again, Jay, very, very humbling, man. Yes. Yeah. So, guys, that'll do it for us. Jay, let's get some plugs in here. Let's go ahead and tell people where they can find you. Plug in the plug, plug, plugs. You can find me over on a Smash This podcast over on the other YouTube channel over there. Uh, you can uh, usually over on the old Twitter box. You can hit me up at uh, Jaybone fifty one fifty. Me personally, that's J A Y B O N E. 5150. You can also find Smash This Podcast on Twitter as well, also on Facebook and Instagram. There you go. Guys, you can find this show wherever podcasts are found Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, YouTube, under at, we talk, I'm sorry, YouTube at The Impact Lounge or Total Nonstop Impact. Connect with the show, rate, review, subscribe, everybody. We got another couple uh, ratings the other day, but guys, keep go, keep rating the show. Jump in there, give it a five star. Let us know what you like. Rate it on iTunes. It's it really helps us get heard, man. It's awesome, big part of us getting heard. But you can also follow the show, guys, at We Talk Impact on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just type in all one word, We Talk Impact. All the pages come right up. So add us there. Get a hold of us. Um, and also you guys can follow me on, on, uh, Twitter at vanilla joke. Uh, it's just like vanilla Coke, but a vanilla joke. You guys follow me. Let's talk. <laughs> Let's talk. And then Kyle is K L underscore T N I. If you want to yell at him for why he's not on this week. So K L underscore T N I give him some shit for not being here, but Jay, we miss anything. How are we doing? Um, I just also wanted to give a quick shout out to some, uh, uh, Facebook impact groups that uh, we're mentioning uh, the Total Nonstop Impact podcast and the Impact Lounge. Oh, uh, yeah. Just just want to say thank you. That's, that's uh, you know, that's just, you know, helps. It helps spread the word. It helps us grow in numbers uh, by word of mouth. Uh, we just want to say uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, big time. There was, there was a lot of love today in the, uh, in the groups talking about what's their favorite Impact podcast. You catch that? I thought that was cool, man. Yeah, yeah. The, it was at the Impact Nation, I believe, on Facebook. Yeah, there's a couple of talking talk- about. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. That's awesome of you guys to uh, to give us that kind of heads up or that kind of plug. You guys are, I mean, hey, I love all the listeners, man. You guys, you guys make all that's worthwhile. Seriously, I mean, I mean, Jay, like the certain ones. There's certain folks, you know, who comment the second it goes up, man, and we love them. We love you guys. So, oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you all for for giving the damn and and giving us all that, guys. So with that said, Jay, let's say goodbye and get these people out of here until next week. We're out of here. See you, everybody.